In typical morning fashion, the K81 local job will normally follow the 11Z down as far as Yatesville and sometimes go down as far as Buttonwood. Today is no different and just a few minutes after the 11Z echoed its way down the line, the power for the K81 charged south behind it, engines light, to perform a setoff in building number 7. The craziness began with the freight car shuffle that had to be done before the actual setoff took place. When we finally got to Yatesville, the K81 was knuckling onto a cut of car so that it had everything in the right order so that the setoff could be made. The power on today's K81 represents the Alpha and the Omega of Jivo Power on the NS. The number 7686 is an ES44 DC that came to NS and was placed in service in November of 2007. The 3642 is an ET44 AC and is one of the newest locomotives on the railroad. But here's where things start to get chaotic. The K81 will have to juggle cars around to get enough spacers to allow them to make their set off into building number 7. The buffer cars are needed because the light density rail leading up to building number 7 can't handle the enormous weight of today's big 6 axle locomotive.
When switching building 7, this is about as far as those big GEs can go. Notice how the junction looked back in the mid 2000s as opposed to how it looks today. All switching had to be done from the main line, unlike today where there's now a siding for the switching. This siding was one of the last upgrades that Canadian Pacific made before selling the line to NS. In an even older picture, you can see how this area looked back in the days of the original Delaware and Hudson. By the time the cut is made, the car is set out and the gates come up, more than five minutes have passed, leaving a lot of frustrated motorists. Unfortunately, it's a maneuver that can't be avoided, and Conductor O'Donnell of this train tells me that he's had his share of choice words hurled at him from angry motorists. But remember this, the railroad was there first. 